जय राधा रवा कुंज बिहारी कुंज जय राधा रवा कुंज बिहारी इंध्याय गोपी जनवल्लभा गोपी जनवल्लभा सौरनंदन भजन जम्मून थीरा जम्मून थीरा हैवान छियान थीर हैधारधवान कुंज बिहार ढाय गोपी जनवा गिरी भार धारिया धूपी जनवल्लभा धारिया सौर नंदन भजा जन हंझा सौर नंदन भजा जन हंझमून थीरावान छियामून जमून थीरावान छियाम धारधवान कुंज बिहार हे धारम माधवान कुंज बिहार हे धार हारे कृष्णा हारे कृष्णा 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 हरि हरि हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा बोलो हे गौरंगम हे हरे कृष्णा 
Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Mm. Krishna, Hari Hari. Hey, I'm heard. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Krishna Nitya Gaur E Rama Rama Nitya Gaur Hari Bho Hari Bho Hari Bho Hari Bho Gaur Hari Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Prabhu Pad Hey Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Prabhu Pad Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Shira Prabhupada and Kijai. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 1 The Manus, Administrators of the Universe, Text Number 10 Atmavasyam Midam Vishvam Yatkinchid Jag Yakinchit jagat yam jagat Tena jagtena bunjita Magriha kasyas vidanam Atmavas yam midam vishwam Yakinchit jagat yam jagat Tena jagtena bunjita Magraha kasya swiddhanam Atmavas yam midam vishvam Yad kinchit jagat yam jagat Tena jagtena bunjita Magraha kasya swiddhanam Bunjidam, Kena, 
I can't see the book. <laughs> Just leave it. Chaitanya Bunjita Agrida Jasya Swedanam Ladies Tena Bunjita Magrita Sasasidana. Anyone else? Atma, the super soul, Avasyam, living everywhere, Idam, this universe, Vishvam, all the all universes, all places, Yat, whatever, Kinchit, everything that exists, Jagatyam, in this world. Everywhere, to God, everything, animate and inanimate. Tena, by Him, Tvaktena, allotted, Bunjita, you may enjoy, Ma, do not, Grida, accept, Kasya, Swit. Of everyone, of anyone else, Danam, the property. Hmm. Translation: Within this universe, the supreme personality of Godhead and His super soul feature is present everywhere, wherever there are animate or inanimate beings. Therefore, one should accept only that which is allotted to him. One should not desire to infringe upon the property of others. So who knows what verse is very similar to this verse in another very important scripture. Except Maharaj, don't Maharaj, come on, you know everything. <laughs> give the give the you know the choir a chance. Come on. <laughs> huh? Well, you did? Oh, okay. I didn't hear. <laughs> so who knows? Which Sri issue punishes which verse? Verse one. That's good. Thank you. You're looking. <laughs> okay, verse one. Very except for the first line, the rest of the verse is exactly the same. Yeah, there is a slight difference in the rest too. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I'll read it again. Maybe we can repeat. Within this universe, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in His Super Soul feature, is present everywhere, wherever there are animate or inanimate beings. Therefore, one should accept only that which is allotted to Him And one should not desire to infringe upon the property of others. I'm not going to try to read the whole purport straight through because it's about four pages long. So we'll take it part by part. Purport. Having described the situation for the Supreme Personality of Godhead as transcendental, Swayambhuvamanu, for the instruction of his sons, 
and grandsons in his dynasty is now describing all the property of the universe as belonging to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Manu's instructions are not only for his own sons and grandsons, but for all human society. The word man, or in Sanskrit Manusha, has been derived from the name Manu, for all members of human society are descendants of the original Manu. Manu is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita 4.1 where the Lord says, Imam Vishvasyate Yogam Proktavan Ahomavyayam Vivasham Manave Praha Manur Ikshvakave Bravit. Translation, I instructed his imperishable science of yoga to the son of Vivashwan, and Vivashwan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, and Manu in turn instructed it to Ishvaku. Swayam Bhuva Manu and Vishva, Vish, Vaivashwata Manu have similar duties. Vaivashwata Manu was born of the sun god, Vivashwan, and his son was Ishvaku, the king of the earth. Since Manu is understood to be the original father of human, humanity, human society should follow his instructions. Swayam Bhuva Manu instructs that wherever that wherever exists, not only in the spiritual world, but even within this material world, is the property of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is present everywhere as the Superconsciousness. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 13.3, Shetra Gyan Chapi Mam Bidhim Sarva Shetru Bharata. In every field, in other words, in every body, the Supreme Lord is existing as the Super Soul. The individual soul is given a body in which to live in according to the instructions of the Supreme Person, and therefore the Supreme Person also exists within every body. We should not think we are independent, rather we should understand that we are allotted a certain portion of the total property of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This understanding will lead to perfect communism. Communists think in terms of their own nations, but spiritual communism instructs here is not only nationwide, but universal. Nothing belongs to any nation or any individual person. Everything belongs to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the meaning of this verse. Namaste <laughs> Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Bebacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare After speaking some words, Srila Prabhupada, before finishing the verse, says this is the meaning of the verse, that everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. Uh, uh, what is that verse from the Bhagavad Gita? Aham sarvasya prabhavo matat savar prapartante iti pajav bhajante mam buddha bhava saman vitaho. I am the source of all material and spiritual worlds. Everything comes from me. The wise who know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their heart. And as Prabhupada clearly makes this point in many of his comments on this particular point, anyone who creates something, they both know the purpose of it and they also are the owner of it. <laughs> You may, use, you may allow someone to use something you create, just like we have these beautiful pictures of the Lord on the wall. So a beautiful art, an artist actually put these paintings together in some, you know, very artistic way. And so we, we might say, well, just maybe that doesn't apply to 
us, but in general, when a paint, painter paints a painting, it belongs to him. So he may display it in a museum, and that then everyone can benefit from that picture. So, but it belongs to the the painter. So, in the same way, the Lord is allowing, or He is so kind that whatever He creates is for our use. But this verse, um, in its essence, really says that one should only take what is allotted, allotted for oneself, and not infringe on the property of others. So we see in this material world, especially today, uh, there is a very, what we say, frenzy, frenziatic, I don't know if that's an actual word, but it's like a, there's a frenzy to accumulate and uh, control more and more things. And that's the whole uh, idea of capitalism and the whole idea of economic development is to get more, have more, use more. And of course their purport is that may you way you will enjoy more. So more is better, right? <laughs> that is the modern sociological, economic, political program that increases the spending power of everyone and therefore money keeps moving in all directions and goods and what but what's happening the earth becomes exploited by this ravaging of natural resources in order to create things we don't need i was uh, informed of a particular statistic that this was back 150 years, maybe 170 years ago, that in the year 1850, uh, using, you know, calculations based on today, uh, people have had 95% uh, of the things that were available in society or even on the market were considered to be necessities. And 5% were considered to be extra, you know, we may call it luxuries, but now the numbers have actually reversed themselves, maybe even even more so. So now it's 95% are useless, <laughs> or extra, you might say. Everyone, it's just like in America, they have what is called the patent office. Patent office means something before it can go on to the sale of the general market and has to be approved by this office to give it uh, some kind of authority. So the patent office is constantly busy with more and more items that come to them for approval or sanctions or disapproval, whatever. And so it says that there were at least the, least, the, the statistics I heard a while back was about 250 items per week and go to the patent office to get approved to go on to the market. So there's this uh, whole idea of getting more and more and more. And what it is, is just, to put it in a very succinct thing, it's greed. <laughs> greed. The, the qualities or the negative qualities that the living entity somehow or other develops are many, but one of them and the most out, one of the most vicious and most well, character destroying quality is greed. Greed destroys the character of a human being really fast. A person who is greedy uh, they're usually not even liked by others <laughs> who are also greedy. <laughs> so this idea of greed, to get more and more and more, more is better. In America, they used to have a bumper sticker. I think it's still somewhat circulating around. It's kind of a, it's a critical bumper sticker. It's kind of facetious. It says... He who dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> so what does that mean? Accumulate the most, and if you die with the most, you're the best. <laughs> you are the best. And, <laughs> and from, that, from that point, it's all downhill. <laughs> 
So yeah, this is the uh, modern uh, push, this idea of more, but it destroys the character. Therefore, this verse helps us to understand. It's also mentioned in the first verse in the Sri Upanishad that one has to live according to their quota. Quota means how much you need, actually, to keep body and soul together in order to execute the activities of Krishna consciousness for devotees, or in general, for people in general. But you can't do that in today's society because the whole push is get more and more. Just like advertising industries, that's one of the most violent of all industries, to create a need that you don't have, a so-called need anyway. So they have these big, big programs where they sit around and think of coming up with new items to sell to the public and how to deliver it to the public in such a way that the public will actually become attracted to it. So they also spy on your computer to see what what is your spending power or how what is the nature of your spending power. And then they send you advertisements based on what they think you like based on their evaluation of your spending power. So, and it, so it's quite, it's actually, when you put it into a very, you know, category, it's actually evil. <laughs> because it's creating this false idea that you need these things. And people somehow or other, they're very much, one devotee was telling me that they were doing some construction work in one building. So they were using uh, this uh, tile glue for putting the tiles onto the floor. So they ran out of, uh, he ran out of tile glue, so he had to go to the, what we call in America, the hardware store, to buy more tile glue. So he's there looking on the shelves to see what to get. And then he's looking and he sees that there are so many different brands of tile, you know, tile glue. And he's not, he's thinking, which one should I get? He's not sure. So he goes to the clerk, the person who's registered, he says, uh, which one would you recommend I get? He, was, he wanted a recommendation from the you know, proprietor. And the proprietor said, well, to tell you the truth, they're all the same. But everyone buys this brand. And he held up the can. There was a half-naked girl on the cover and, and on the can. So this is the one that's the most popular. <laughs> So that's called, you know, sales pitch. <laughs> so, this is, um, so he didn't buy that one because <laughs> he was a devotee. <laughs> so th this is what they do in order to create this, this greed. So um, I find in my conversations with devotees, they struggle in order to somehow or other uh, find out the, the balance in life between what they need and what they think they need. <laughs> and, the, and the devotees are honest. They realize that they have more than they need. <laughs> and then they also struggle to figure out what they can't <laughs> use or what they should give away <laughs> like that. I always tell them, if you haven't used it in two years, throw it out. <laughs> give it a two-year, you know, chance. But this greed is just, it destroys, and people just spend so much time and energy and wasting time, which is really exploiting the whole idea of human society to get more and more. And then there's competitions. And now what you have is wars based on this, because some countries have more of the natural resources than other countries, and therefore, in order to keep the machines going, they have to somehow use some economic ploy to get these things. And if they can't get it in that way, they do it in espionage. If they don't get it in espionage, then they get it in war. So this is how war is developed, that the people want to exploit one country. And that's always there, you know, especially now. Apparently, they, call, they say there's a shortage of oil. But who has all the oil in the Middle East? <laughs> you know, and they're laughing. They, they're saying, yeah, we know what you're after, and we got it. <laughs> and we'll raise the price 
unlimitedly. <laughs> so it's going on like this, this, and everyone is victimized by this, this idea. But devotees have to somehow or other understand that what do you actually need in Krishna consciousness? To become Krishna conscious, you only need three things. Of course, somebody might disagree with my conclusion, but anyway. <laughs> At least three things. I mean, aside from the paraphernalia you use, I mean, the three, the paraphernalia you use could be a little bit broader in, in quantity, but the three things you need is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you have to have Krishna Prashadam, and you have to have association with devotees. And so these are the three that are essential for our spiritual life. If you don't have any money or any possessions, you can still make it back to Godhead. <laughs> In fact, you might even make it easier. <laughs> but for the sake of service, and especially for the sake of preaching, we do take on a lot of re other responsibilities. But we have to be careful and not to get overwhelmed with the uh, necessities that they call a yukta vairagya, but sometimes it becomes more yukta than vairagya. <laughs> uh, Therefore, one has to be very discriminated. Do I actually need these things? Or what do I actually have that is important for my Krishna conscious service? And what can I use to benefit others by what I have? So therefore, taking inventory is a very big part of our Krishna consciousness. Jai Shishi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit more of the purport. And Prabhupada continues, we'll read that statement over. This is the meaning of this verse. Atma vasyam idam vishwam. Whatever exists within this universe is the property of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The modern communistic theory and also the idea of the United Nations can be reformed, indeed rectified by the understanding that everything belongs to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord is not a creation of our intelligence, rather he has created us. Atmavasyam midam vishwam, ishavasyam midam sarvam. This universal communism can solve all the problems of the world. Very powerful statement. One should learn from the Vedic literature that one's body is also not the property of the individual soul, but is given to the individual soul according to his karma. Karmana daiva netrena janta deho papataye. The 8,400,000 species different of different bodily forms are machines given in the individual soul. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Riddeshe Jurnadishtati Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudrani Rudani Mayaya. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living beings who are seated on the machine made of the material energy. The Lord, as the super soul, sits in everyone's heart and observes the various desires of the individual soul. The Lord is so merciful that he gives the living entity the opportunity to enjoy varieties of desires and suitable bodies, which are nothing but machines, yantra, rudani, mayayam. These machines are manufactured by the material greetings of the external energy, and thus the living entity enjoys or suffers according to his desires. This opportunity is given, to, given by the supreme, by the super soul. And Krishna Prabhupada goes on again. Everything belongs to the Supreme. How many times did he say it so far in this verse? And therefore one should not usurp another's property. We have a tendency to manufacture many things, especially nowadays we are building skyscrapers and developing other material facilities. We should know, however, that the ingredients of the skyscrapers and machines cannot be manufactured by anyone but the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The whole world is nothing but a combination of the five material elements, Tejo Bhada, Midiyata, Vinimaya. A, size, a skyscraper is a transformation of earth, water, and fire. 
Earth and water are combined and burned into bricks by fire, and a skyscraper is essentially a tall construction of bricks. Although the bricks may be manufactured by man, the ingredients of the bricks are not. Of course, man as a manufacturer may accept a salary from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is stated here, Tena Dwaktena Munjita. One may construct a big skyscraper, but neither the constructor, the merchant, nor the worker can claim proprietorship. Proprietorship belongs to the person who has spent for the building. And Prabhupada, again, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has manufactured water, earth, air, fire, and sky, and one has to use these things and take their salary. However, one cannot claim proprietorship. This is perfect communism. So sometimes people say, well, yeah, we can accept everything belongs to the Lord, but the Lord has so much. So it doesn't matter how much I take, it's not going to take away from him. He's, you know, he's got a lot. And he can, you know, he, he can supply everybody and still be, you know, you know, in pretty good shape himself. So they say, well, because he has a lot, we can take and take and take and take and take. But the point is, you can do that up to a certain point, but the point is, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> and that's the point. Are we using it to further Krishna conscious? Or are we using it to somehow satisfy our mental and sensual uh, desires for some kind of ephemeral happiness? based on having things or using things like that. That we have to understand. Um, therefore, the principle is that one should respect everything as the, as the property of your Lord. Another part of this point is not to misuse anything. How we use what we have is another feature of this principle. We have to use it in the best possible way and not neglect it. Sometimes I see, I don't want to complain, but it's part of my nature. I always do anyway. <laughs> I see people, devotees wasting things. Like they take a roll of paper and they take about you know half the roll out to wash the floor with it or clean, clean the table or something. And, or we take you know aluminum foil and we cover everything with it. <laughs> and then we throw it away after getting one use like that. Yeah, there's so much, you know, we can go to the store and buy more. You know. So this is just misuse. Prabhupada, when he would be on morning walk sometimes, uh, he would see a faucet leaking in a person's house. He would in indicate to one of his devotees, go shut that off, they're wasting Krishna's energy. I was in a uh, situation many years ago, it was in 1993, we were in one city in America, Cincinnati, Ohio, where there was a, a huge drought which had covered most of the Midwest. And the drought had gone off right through, I mean, right through the spring, even when, during the rainy season, and into the summer. So from, there was no rain for about three to four months. And crops were burning up. And people were, you know, told, you know, you have to ration your water. You can't, you know, use too extra water to take your baths. You can't wash your car. You can't water, water your lawns, which people usually do all the time. And there was fines imposed on persons that were violating these rules. And so it became somewhat of a, you know, a critical situation. Fortunately, the devotees... Uh, what happened was, I don't know if this pertains to the verse, but anyway, um, I met one person who was uh, a disc jockey who was running a radio station, but he was also a lawyer who was doing our, our accounts for our temple. So after getting to know him, he invited me on his radio show, which was a very big radio show. It was he has he covered 38 states of America and there were millions of people and it was a talk show and it was a three hour talk show so he asked me to come on and speak about Krishna Khan and he was interviewing me and, and he liked the whole idea of Hare Krishna and at one point he said you know um, 
we have these commercials that we every 15, 20 minutes or so, we break the station for a commercial. I'd like to use the Hare Krishna chant for our commercial break. So can you sing it and we'll record it and then we'll play it? I, I, sure, why not? It sounds like good preaching. So I did. And then the show ended. But then again, uh, he asked me to come on later. And this was during the drought time. And this said, could you bring some of your other people with you and we'll have a bigger discussion. And I heard you're in, connected with the New Vrindavan community, so bring some of those people on. So I brought the leader of the community, Kirtananda Swami, along with five or six other devotees. So we sat there, and believe it or not, right during the beginning of the show, he says, you know, he starts talking about the drought, and it was severe. And he said, uh, he just, you know, he was kind of like a little bit, flippant, you know, like he would be teasing us sometimes with questions. So he said to us, can you guys make it rain? <laughs> you know, very, and it is like all these millions of people out there. So, and then Kirtananda Swami said, yes, <laughs> right on the air. So he almost fell off his seat. He said, you know, there's so many millions of people out there, you're going to be guys going to be known as false prophets, you know. And I, we said, no. I mean, we said, sure, we can make it rain. Really? How do we do that? Well, it's easy. You allow us to chant, and but we we're going to invite the entire audience out there in Radio Land to chant with us. And only when they all chant with us, then it will rain. So he got psyched up. He believed it. So we went through it, and we began a kirtan. And we, we sung for a couple of minutes on the air. And while we were singing, he was really pumping the audience. Come on! The, the, the Hare Krishnas are going to make it rain. <laughs> They're going to make it rain. Come on, sing with them. So I mean, he's pretty good at getting people to do things. So... Uh, that was 9.30 in the morning, and the show goes from 9 a.m. to noon. So around 11.30 that morning, we were still on the air. We get a call from a weather reporter who was out in his car. He said, his name was Bill. He said, hey, Bill, you know, there's some clouds coming over here. <laughs> he was about 50 miles from where we were. And then the show ended. But 2.30 that day, there was a huge downpour, and it lasted for three days. <laughs> And, uh, you know, after that, he became so excited, the radio announcer, he went to the city hall and talked to the mayor, and we got what we call the key of the city. It's kind of like the, a very honorable, you know, award for doing something outstanding. So they presented us with this big key. <laughs> I think it was made out of styrofoam or something. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so we, uh, somehow or other we got so we got at least we got people to chat, and that was the whole thing. So uh, yeah, so this uh, this idea of uh, when people are Krishna conscious, and this is the point, there's no shortage. That's like they say now. There's so many. There's people are using 50% of what is available for the Earth's production per year, 50% more. So Earth is producing, and we take 50% more than what the Earth produces per year. So therefore, there's somewhat of an emergency to somehow um, do something. So they think there's too many people in the world, so we have a plan for that. Anyway, <laughs> that's another topic. <laughs> So and that was an economic, uh, you know, this guy, uh, Thomas Malthusus, he said that uh, in order to keep resources available to the population, you have to have wars, pestilence, and various other calamities to reduce the population. So he's pretty popular, at least among certain class of people. <laughs> so this is what goes on. But Prabhupada said the earth can produce... Uh, Ten times what it produces now, if people are God conscious, and that's the point, and that means getting away from this greediness. Because by becoming God consciousness, you don't really, really, you you somehow understand you don't need all the things that everybody else says they need. 
because material society teaches one thing and we teach. We say, you are perfect because you are pure spirit, soul, part and parcel of Krishna. Your perfection is within you. Material propaganda is you are imperfect. You have to have these things to become perfect. And so based on this reverse on understanding, they propagate this greedy society that you have to have, you need these things. But we understand that simply by becoming Krishna conscious, and Krishna consciousness is not depending on anything material, one can be not only happy, satisfied, and you know, fulfill the goal of life, of going back home, back to Godhead. So this, uh, and this verse and purport is a very, and Prabhupada goes on in the later part of the purport to say, if you take more than what you actually need, you're a thief. <laughs> Uses a very strong word in the sense that, uh, well, people think that, you know, the earth is for us, for us to enjoy. And God gave us, you know, he gave it to us, and we should use it to enjoy as much as we can. But that enjoyment principle is is curtailed by the principle of acknowledging, just like in, when you sit down for, at least in tradition, of course we do it, you sit down to, to take food, you say a prayer acknowledging that the source of food is coming from God. I remember growing up as a Christian, in my home in America, that was something I learned from my was childhood. We always we call it saying grace. Probably also in every country there's some some acknowledgement that God has given the food before you eat. Well, now that's been pushed away. No people don't even do that anymore. Maybe a few of the some of the cultures are still left, but. Everyone, at least that was an acknowledgement that thank you, God, for giving us this food for our nourishment, which is very necessary. So everyone wants to just refuse to accept the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of God and at the same time enjoy the property of the Lord. We say they want God, they want the kingdom of God without God. <laughs> and that's that is this hard struggle to somehow or other, you know, uh, fight over the, the so-called limited resources of this world. And therefore, because everyone is unlawfully uh, uh, usurping the property of the Lord, no one is happy. But devotees can be happy because they acknowledge, well, this belongs to Krishna. And you take that principle not only in things, but in all, even individual, every individual belongs to Krishna. Sometimes we think my wife, my husband, my, you know, children, but they're not really yours in the essential principle of understanding. They can be used, spoken by in that way, but we know that, that they actually are Krishna. We even say my body, but that's even wrong. <laughs> because the body, as mentioned here, comes from the material energy, and those energies are supplied, or ingredients for the energy are supplied by the Supreme Lord himself. So what do we have? Nothing. We have devotional service, that's all we have. <laughs> or our connection with Krishna. And therefore, and therefore we have to understand that whatever we have and wherever we are belongs to God and should be used in the service of the Lord. And the more we develop that consciousness, the more we are happy because attachment is the source of suffering, detachment is the source of happiness. Detachment in the sense of using, as Rupa Goswami explains, to use things for the service of the Lord. That is real renunciation or detachment. And if we can learn that principle completely, then we're always happy. And then whatever you gain, fine. Whatever you lose or don't have, you go on in life. It's not like when you lose something, you know, it's the end of the world. <laughs> Because all these things are, you know, they just come and they go, and they don't belong to us in the first place. But we can use them. Okay, we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, Sabina. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for this lecture. I just uh, like to make a comment uh, regarding this Yukta Vairagya um, because some devotees are actually given, you know, opulence and, um, you know, I, I like the idea of uh, if you have enough, like build longer tables, not higher walls. <laughs> Longer tables and higher... Not higher walls, but longer tables. Longer t That's for prashadam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in other words, inviting more yeah, people together yes, rather yes, than yes, blocking yes. people yes, with yes, wall yes, yes, yes. walls. Okay. Yes. Just a comment. So that's the, that's the principle of generosity or community or, you know, just being a nice person. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, two questions from Avaduta Rai Prabhu. Who? Avaduta Rai. Uh, somewhere I heard if one renders Tamasa Bhakti, one can attain Pitriloka, but why Pitriloka? What kind of Bhakti is it? Uh, Tamasa Bhakti. What Bhakti? I'm not sure. Can you spell it? T A M A S A. Tamasa, like. Uh, oh, Tamasa. Yeah. No, T Raina, that's another kind of Bhakti. Uh, Tamasa Bhakti, one can get to the Pitra Loka. So, you want a confirmation for that statement? Is he that says, what he's asking he for? He says, why Pitriloka? The planet of the forefathers. Mm -hmm. Those who worship the forefathers, you know, go to the planet of the forefathers. And somewhere in the material world. <laughs> we changed the Bhagavad Gita since then. <laughs> I, I do have a, a copy of the old Gita yet, and I still read that one. <laughs> Get three. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, can, you can have your own tree, yeah. <laughs> or if you want, you can become a tree. <laughs> that used to be an old version of Bhagavad Gita. It said you go to Triloka, or why? you know that was just a. It, mis it was a mistake in the in the tra in the writing of the Gita. <laughs> that was taken out and, and put in, in proper context. <laughs> okay. Okay. So another question, because bhakti is the function of international potency of Krishna, does the internal internal yes internal potency of Krishna. Does that mean that on the stage of sadhana we perform only uh, semblance of bhakti till the level of prema? Mm. Well, sadhana bhakti doesn't go to prema. <laughs> Baba bhakti starts halfway between. So um, sadhana only can, sadhana bhakti is the preliminary. That's following rules and regulations, but it also can manifest in the form of Raganuga Bhakti. Yeah, so, yeah, it's the internal potency of the Lord. But then we also understand from Srimad Bhagavatam there's different mixtures. There's, in other words, as the Shastras say, there's 81 ways not to perform pure Bhakti. You can, there is 81 less pure forms of bhakti. So you take the nine processes of devotional service and you give it three modes of material nature. Nine times three is 27 times three is 81. 81 ways that you cannot perform pure devotional service. But it can still be considered to be devotional service. But then again, when you evaluate that statement in context with the supreme understanding, you find that bhakti me really means pure devotional service. You're, when you're mixed, you're coming to the stage of bhakti. 
But because there is an element of devotion there, it's still given the term bhakti. <laughs> like if you want to enjoy the fruits of your activities, that is mixed bhakti, and it's fruit of result. It's called karma mishra bhakti. Mishra means mixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bhakti is there. I mean, when you take the definition even farther, you can find that the word that bhakti exists practically everywhere in life, even outside of religious activities. People have this sense of bhakti towards something. But when you actually speak about devotional service or an, an, what is called ananya bhakti, ananya, pure, unalloyed bhakti, then that's real bhakti. <laughs> and that's the nature of the soul. Nitya siddha krishna prema sadhu kabonoi sravanadi siddhi chitte kodi e udoi. In the hearts of all living entities, pure love for God exists. So mixture means there's bhakti there, but it's it's still in the process of developing. <laughs> okay, anything else? Any questions from the locals? No? Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> Maharaj, if you... I'm pushing your time limit here. <laughs> uh, thank you. Could I please? I uh, could I please ask um, about greed? Um, about about greed. Um, so um, greed. A uh, greed. Uh, we talk about. So if um, if we have a lot of greed in our hearts and we are very inclined to taking more than we need, um, how can we start to purify ourselves from that tendency? How to how to um, start with? Um, with that. Well, be greedy for Krishna. <laughs> be greedy. I want more service. I want to chant more. Uh, not a hundred percent. When it comes to prasadam, you have to careful. Be careful on that part. But when it comes to service, Prabhupada says, "Be greedy for Krishna's service." That's all. And then after a while, you purify the greed, and it becomes. You know, an element of bhakti. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ekalam is lalayam. Mm. Oh yeah, that's the that's the main, that's the epitome of all knowledge. To become greedy for love, for loving Krishna, and, and you don't want anything else but Krishna. <laughs> that kind of greed. It's it's focused uh, solely on Krishna. Give me Krishna or nothing else. I don't care. <laughs> yes, Adi. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <coughs> Thank you for the amazing story. We, where, which station was it? Where was it? In Cincinnati, Cincinnati Ohio. Okay. Okay. The year was 1993. 1993. Yeah, wow. It was right in July. In, in July. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so. Uh, I have a question <clears throat> that was asked from from me uh, about sense gratification. So there were there are there were some devotees uh, who have been quite blessed by Krishna, endowed with wealth and everything. So they were asking that uh, okay, it's uh, given by Krishna. We have gotten the means, uh, and uh, so we take prasad. So is it sense gratification? What, what is sense gratification for us? Because it's all offered to Krishna and they, they sponsor so many programs. So what is, the, what is this uh, horrible thing, sense gratification? Because whatever they do seems to be uh, quite legitimate. No, sense gratification takes so many forms. In, in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the very beginning, I think it's almost the first chapter. It says there's 22 ways you can en engage in sense gratification. 
in Chaitanya Charitamrita in the very beginning. I think it's in the first chapter. Twenty-two different ways you can in, you can engage in sense gratification. One of them is health. You know, there are hypochondriacs. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a kind of you know sense gratification. <laughs> and that's one. Political, social, economic. The whole there's a whole list. I can actually give you the verse. Twenty-two ways to engage in sense gratifications. <laughs> So it's not just, you know, the basic stuff that we do from day to day. It's many other forms of sense gratification. People enjoy other people's suffering. That's a form of sense gratification. Someone is suffering who I don't like. I feel happy about that. <laughs> it's very demoniac, of course. But it's another form of sense gratification. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm.